Ambry a battery that could change the world. What needs to happen in order to change the word could to will? Is it about politics? Is it about getting the right contract, scaling it up? But in your mind, how will this play out the next years? Are you ready to just scale it up or do you see big hurdles that need to be overtaken? Uh, no, it's it's simply mastering the uh, the manufacturing at scale. I mean, I invented the, the technology at the university. I with my students and postdocs, um, and the, the electrochemistry has proven to be even better than we imagined. I mean, we've got data where we're, we're running for years uh, with deep discharge, thousands of cycles, and retaining ninety nine plus percent of nameplate capacity. No capacity fade, as as you see in in lithium ion and so on. But that was in the laboratory at the university. Now to build these things, we had to invent the entire universe. It wasn't just the, the chemistry, but all right, how do you upscale it? What should be the cell size? And then we have to put an, an aggregation of cells together that will generate enough heat that they can continue to maintain the high temperature by themselves. And, and then the manufacturing, uh, there involves uh, uh, liquid metals, molten salts, how do you handle those in a manufacturing environment? And the, the, the temperatures that we're running at are just, uh, let's just say around 500 degrees Celsius. And uh, at, at some point you have to have a, a feed through where you have one electrode, electrode of one polarity, uh, and you have to access that you have to go through the container to get access to that. And then the other electrode of opposite polarity, well, you can, you can let that electrode be in contact with the container. So that, that one electrode has to have a, a, a means to connect, and that's got to be a feed-through. And that feed-through has to have an insulating collar around it. And that insulating collar is not going to be metallic because it will conduct electricity. And so to come up with a, a, a dielectric ceramic seal that can uh, tolerate the, the, the thermal environment uh, and also has to be prepared for uh, disruption. What if, what, if the, what if the grid goes down and the batteries cool and then we have to reheat them and so on? The, the, that ceramic has to be resilient, and, uh, and, but it has to be cheap. I mean, I could build you the battery 10 years ago to a NASA price point, but to, to, to make these things at scale and, you know, not, it's not like graduate school where you, you make 10 cells and two or three of them work and you publish your paper and you're so proud. This means you make thousands of cells and all of them have to work. You know, it's six sigma quality control and so on. There's no room for error. And and then we have to demonstrate this at scale. And so it's a long journey. And that's why, you know, Ambry's probably got another year before we will re release the first product into uh, customer hands because it has to be uh, resilient. If we release the first product prematurely and it fails after a short period of time, then our reputation is destroyed. And there's no second chance to make a first impression. So you have to get it right. And, and then even, you know, you mentioned about uh, uh, regulatory and policy and so on. I mean, if, if we want to put this on the grid, no, you, you cannot play with the grid. There is no sandbox for the grid. You have to demonstrate that this device is, is stable and will not, because if we put this device on the grid and then there's, there's a cascade of of power loss. I mean, the, the, the grid operator, the generator, the distributor, they're all going to be so angry. They'll, they'll, they'll say, this is crazy. We, we can't take these chances. So uh, the only way that we can demonstrate that is to find some sort of off-grid, uh, like micro-grid place where we can sort of test drive it, so to speak. And, uh, and then people say, well, we want 20 years, 20 years of, of uh, operation uh, with no more than this amount of capacity fade. And let's say, uh, so, we, so we say, well, we've done the tests and we've, we've gone you know, five years, uh, 5,000 cycles, um, D 
steep discharge, uh, less than 1% capacity fade. They say, no, no, you said you're going to go 20 years. Show us data for 20 years. I said, you want data for 20 years? He said, yeah, we want data for 20 years. So, you know, the bar is set really, really high. And uh, I, think, I think the way things will turn out is there, there will be some first adopters, uh, people who really want to go green, and they, they're going to pair our Ambry battery with uh, solar arrays so they can run their facility 100% uh, carbon-free. And um, when that first uh, customer is able to give independent testimony to say, this thing really works. Then the second cut. In, in this risk averse uh, environment, nobody wants to be first. Everybody wants to be first to be second. Once they know somebody else has, has taken the risk and survived, then they'll say, okay, let's, let's, let's have a conversation with these people. It's super interesting. And I think when you mention, you know, nobody wants to do something wrong with the grid, it just shows you how difficult this is. Because if you're a tech guy from Silicon Valley making a small app, I mean, the consequences are zero if you miss. But this is a completely different ball game. And it also is a completely different ball game in terms of financing, right? I mean, it seems from the outside, you've been lucky to get great people on board, but I don't know how easy that is to get people like, you know, Gates and Total Energy, et cetera, to join you. But it's a long trajectory and you know it's high risk, right? But isn't it also very interesting to work with something which has the potential to be so important that even though the risk is high, it feels like the right thing to try to achieve at least? Yeah, uh, there's no question that the, that the reason people want to work on this project is a, a higher sense of purpose. I mean, uh, it sounds a little bit trite, but, but it's true. I mean, the, the people in our workforce, they're doing this because they want to change the world. And they want to change the world for the better. And uh, there's some really uh, hard, uh, really time-consuming work that has to be done to, to, to change something like the grid. The grid is not, as you point out, it's not like writing code. This is, this is physical. We call it tough tech. I call it heavy industry. And um, uh, the barrier to entry is very high. But um, I mean, I think it's, 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 it's a problem worth solving. Definitely. But another yeah. way, we can't afford not to solve it. <laughs> In other words, all the solar and all the wind are, they're useless. They're not help. They're useless. <laughs> <laughs>